Hello, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this year's recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award, the Honorable Norman Kwong, to deliver his keynote speech. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I hope you can keep quiet for my five minutes that I've got here, same as you are right now. But um, it's a real pleasure to be here in uh, Toronto. Uh, most of the other times I've been in Toronto was for t playing in the Great Cup, and I used to take a lot more punishment in those days. But good evening, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the association, of Chinese Canadian entrepreneurs. I'm very honored to accept this Lifetime Achievement Award from this distinguished organization. And to uh, have Mr. Fred Lai meet me and son Asher at the airport. They've been very kind of, uh, to us. And I should tell you that your last year's recipient, Mr. Tong Lui, is a relative of ours. He's a uh, brother-in-law to Mary's uh, sister, so what does that make me? Uh, <laughs> but it's a pleasure to follow Tong because he, as I said, he's a good friend and an in-law of ours. However, I'll admit to being a little surprised at being chosen because I've never thought of my career in terms of lifetime goals and, ach and achievements or in terms of being an entrepreneur like Tong Louie who better fits my understanding of the word. I've always just focused on whatever challenge was in front of me at the time. And I've always focused on making the most of every opportunity presented to me. And because I've loved sports, and I really do, because you always know where you stand, if you've won or you lost, because it's right there on the scoreboard. So it's nice to think that of all the individual challenges and opportunities I've encountered over the years, have added up to a lifetime of success. And it's a real pleasure that you've recognized that for me. I think it's largely because of luck, timing, but maybe a little ability. And now the organizers of this event have asked me to offer a few words of encouragement and inspiration. Some observations from the weathered old veteran. And it's actually hard for me to realize how many years have gone by until I try to run a little faster than I can. But here's my advice to the next generation of Chinese Canadian entrepreneurs and community leaders. You might assume that all the years of football tackles had left me unable to remember much of anything. That I've gone a little punch drunk. But I've managed yeah. to come up with a few. She said, yeah. <laughs> but I've managed to come up with a few words of wisdom. And the first one is one pearl of wisdom that I learned in my football days. And I think it's actually one of the first lessons that any player learns. The fact is that you're going to get tackled and stopped at some point, no matter how hard or how fast you can run. But the secret to success then is in how quickly you can shake off that hit or set back and get back up on your feet. So I think over the years, I've learned to take a licking and keep on ticking, as they used to say about the old Timex watches. They were very cheap watches, weren't they? <laughs> anyway, I've learned that being down and out doesn't necessarily mean you're out. It just means you have to get back up and try again. So after starting my career with the Calgary Stampeders, and after winning a Grey Cup and playing three seasons with that team, they let me go because of uh, an ankle injury. I could have given up on football, but the Edmonton Eskimos decided to take a chance on me. And I went on to play 10 more seasons with Edmonton, and we won three more great cups. I also experienced the importance of never giving up when I returned to the Calgary Stampeders to serve as president and general manager. The organization wasn't in great shape when I took over in 1988. They were pretty much at the bottom of the league and I had to keep the team out of bankruptcy more than once. But I'm sure there were people who thought the Stampeders were done, but my management team and I kept at it. We restructured the finances 
work to improve the team images, uh, boost ticket sales, and strengthen the quality of players we had to work with. But I think our success was mostly due to the last reason, because we started winning. And the fact that I picked uh, Wally Bono to be my coach and general manager, and you know how well he's done. That, uh, that team quickly moved up the rankings and back into the Great Cup Finals. Now the second bit of wisdom I, I have also comes from the word world of sport, and it applies to business and entrepreneurship. It has to do with accepting or not accepting the barriers and limits others place on us. You know, back in 1954, British sprinter Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile for the first time. And up until then, most people thought that that was impossible. They thought that the human body had already reached its natural speed limit. But as it turns out, the four minutes turned out to be uh, just a mental barrier. And there were likely runners before Bannister that had the power to break the record and just didn't do it because they didn't believe they could do it. And maybe that kept them from really trying. Also, I should mention that I was one of the original owners of the Calgary Flames. In fact, I still have a Stanley Cup ring, the only one they've ever won. But, so I show it to people whenever I get a chance. So. <laughs> have the Maple Leafs won one lately? <laughs> oh. <No. laughs> I have to be careful in Edmonton because when I'm in Edmonton, I, I, have to talk, I can't talk about Calgary. When I'm in Calgary, I can't talk about Edmonton. So here, I guess I'm wide open. <laughs> anyway, I've also had to face a few barriers in my time. Most, uh, most of you wouldn't know this, but back in my day, when I was a child, five or six years old, uh, Chinese weren't allowed in the public swimming pools, in the wading pools of all things. Because I went, there was one park that we used to go to all the time, and I asked my sister, I said, let's go in the wading pool. She said, we can't do that. And I said, why? She said, because we're Chinese. So I had to think about that for a while, when, and being only five, I didn't really solve the problem. But I finally became the first Chinese Canadian to play in the CFL. And there were plenty of people who assumed that a Chinese player would never be able to compete at such an elite level. Maybe because most Chinese were smaller in stature in, in those days, so people thought they wouldn't be able to play the game well. But I knew that I could play football and loved it. So I ignored the status quo and went to work. I did my best to block out the negative attitudes and I focused on the game. As I mentioned earlier, that focus ended up delivering a career that spanned 13 great seasons. Uh, we were in the playoffs every year that I played out of those 13 years, and we won four great cups. And I also left, when I quit football, 31 Canadian football records uh, when I retired. I think I still have one, but um, I think it was for most times, no. <laughs> but there have been other little four-minute mile barriers that have helped break down over the years. And one of the most exciting came in 1989 when I was part of the Calgary Flames ownership group. The Flames were in the 1989 Stanley Cup Finals against the Montreal Canadiens. It was game six, and the Canadiens had home ice advantage. That might not sound like such a big deal, until you consider that Montreal had never lost the Stanley Cup final on home ice. So no team before us had ever been able to break that barrier. But Calgary managed to do it. We won that game and took the cup home to Alberta. Calgary's really great, isn't it? No? <laughs> anyway, stories like that are reminders that we need to think carefully when we hear someone say, that's never been done, or that can't be done. Because what they're actually saying is that no one has found a way to do it yet. So this brings me to my third and final bit of wisdom, 
that I have to offer you this evening. It's the key to finding the courage to break down barriers, and it's surprisingly simple. Just focus on doing what you love, and I think you'll find that the barriers will start to fall. I didn't become the first Chinese Canadian player in the CFL or work to save the Stampeders later on in my career just to prove a point. I took on those challenges because I loved the sport. I also didn't take on the challenge of becoming Alberta's first Chinese Lieutenant Governor to prove a point. I did it because I love my province and country and I was thrilled to have any opportunity to serve the place I'm proud to call home. So if I had to sum up the lessons to be drawn from my life and experiences, if there's one hope I have for the next generation of Chinese Canadians, it's this. Do what you love and you'll find that it's probably what you do best. Never accept the limitations others might place on your potential for success. And if you happen to get tackled along the way, just get back up and keep on moving toward the goal. It's a simple philosophy, but it's worked well for me, and I think it could work well for others. It worked uh, very well for me when I went out to Vancouver and found this little girl. <laughs> Where were you? That's good. No, it's good. But I should tell you that her sister was here last year with Willis and Louis to, to accept uh, Tong, Louis. Tong Louis Award. But I want to thank you all again for this wonderful honor. Thank you for your kind attention, especially. Congratulations to this year's award uh, winners and nominees, and best of luck to all of you in whatever challenges that you set out for yourselves. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Congratulations once again to the Honorable Norman Kwong.